This is the bike I'm going to be riding on this little adventure. It's the same folding railroad attachment I had on my pedal bike in my last video. I just made some different mounts for the fork and swing arm to adapt it onto the e-bike. The only thing that's different on it is I added this spring-loaded roller on the outside of the track, which helps deal with the grounding straps that are on the outside of the rails. This bike has a large 5 kilowatt pack. I range tested the battery for 200 miles at a constant 20 miles an hour, so I figure it should be good for 100 to 120 miles of hard riding. Up here on top of the battery, I have a drone controller mounted so I can film with a drone while I'm riding on this trip. This trip should take around 6 hours, but with filming I'm guessing it's going to be more like 12 hours. So besides the drone and camera, I'm going to take my tent and bag, just in case I need to spend the night. I've been all the way through town on the tracks, but I've never been north or south of town, so I've decided to ride the tracks from the beginning to the end. The end in this case is where the track junctions into live tracks. And on my way, I'm also going to hit up the trails and the parks that the tracks pass through. So, I'm going to head about 20 miles up the coast to a small town called Davenport where the tracks begin. But it's going to be more like 40 miles to get there, because I like to take the back roads and stay off the main highway as much as I can. So this is the bustling little town of Davenport, population 400. It was basically built to house the workers that worked at the cement plant, which was built in the early 1900s. The tracks originate from the cement plant that is now closed. The cement plant was built in 1906 to help rebuild San Francisco after the earthquake and to supply cement for the Panama Canal and Pearl Harbor. The tracks were built specifically for the plant to haul the cement down the coast. This location also supplied cement for many well-known California landmarks, including the Golden Gate Bridge and Candlestick Park. The cement plant closed in 2010, which is why the tracks are now abandoned. In my last video, people kept asking what happens if a train comes. The only trains that used these tracks were from the cement plant, and when the cement plant closed 12 years ago, there hasn't been a train on these tracks since. The tracks come out of the cement plant, cross the highway, and then head south, straight down the coast.
So I'm going to hop on the tracks here in Davenport and follow the tracks until they junction into live tracks, which I believe to be somewhere south of Watsonville and north of Salinas. There's a couple reasons why I've been wanting to ride these tracks north of town. One, the views up here are, well, spectacular. But the main reason I want to ride up here is because the tracks are seamless all the way from Davenport to Santa Cruz. In town, the rails are bolted together and there can be a quarter inch mismatch between the two rails. Plus, you also have the grounding straps. This is what a seamless welded rail looks like. So much nicer to ride than the bolt together joints that are in town. The rails up here are actually in really good shape. The problem is, the vegetation has been allowed to grow for 12 years, which means a lot of the track up here is inaccessible. Besides filming, I can also use the drone to inspect the track to see what is on the other side of blockages. That way I know if it's worth trying to get around it or if I should just go back out and take the road in certain sections. I also use the drone mounted to the bike as a gimbal cam. It gives a little different perspective than a GoPro, because the camera stays level when you lean around turns. At this time of year, there's not a lot of people down on the beach. So I'm going to take the opportunity to take a little spin down on the sand.
first park that the tracks go through is a state park called Wilder Ranch, which is a great place to go hiking and mountain bike riding. It's an old dairy farm that was built in the late 1800s and sits on 7,000 acres. This park may not have a lot of technical or advanced single track, but you will have the opportunity to ride some fire roads with great scenery, plus a few intermediate single track trails. And if you want to take a trip through the past, you can check out the old buildings that are still here. As a home shop machinist, the best part about Wilder Ranch for me is the shop. This shop was built in 1897, and all of the machinery was powered by a Pelton water wheel. The water wheel ran a belt system up to the ceiling and from there would drop down to the lathe, the sander, the drill press, and even a generator that powered electric lights. All right, so back over to the tracks. You can see here that the tracks here in Wilder are completely overgrown, so I will have to go back out and take a bike path that runs alongside the tracks. So, I'm able to get back on the tracks about a mile out of town. This is the first railroad crossing, which means we are now entering the city limits. The first building we come to here on the left is the old Wrigley's Gum Factory, which is now home to Santa Cruz Mountain Bikes. Just before the boardwalk, there's a lagoon with floating walkways. So I'm going to hop off the tracks and take a detour through the lagoon, just to get off the tracks for a while and see something different. At the boardwalk, the tracks go down the middle of the road for a quarter mile, so I will have to fold up and ride on the road. My railroad attachment locates on both sides of the rail, and because the pavement is butted up to the outside of the rail, it makes it difficult to ride the tracks across pavement.
I was hoping to ride across the boardwalk trestle, but the tracks go through the boardwalk where there's no bikes allowed, so I will have to take the bike path that runs beside the tracks to get across the trestle. This next open space preserve is where I want to test out my new drone's tracking and obstacle avoidance system. It has a lot of wide trails with a tree canopy above, so I figure it will be a good place to see how well the drone can follow me through tree branches. The drone is a DJI Mini 3 Pro. It did fairly well through the trees, but I did have to go somewhat slow in order for it to keep up when it was having to avoid tree branches.
This next trestle, I've never been across before. In the past, the authorities have tried to keep people off this trestle, but since the trains have stopped, I've been seeing more people walking across it. So, I figure I'll ride across it and see what happens. At this point, the sun's getting pretty low on the horizon, so I think I'm going to have to spend the night here because I don't want to have to finish the trip in the dark. I've never been this far south on the tracks before, not sure if I will run into problems crossing private farmland, and also, I don't know exactly where the tracks become live. It was at this point that I started hearing train noises off in the distance. So, I thought it might be best to fold up and finish the rest of the trip beside the track.
So that looks like the Pajaro Junction that I saw on Google Maps across the street there. Not quite what I was expecting. I thought there'd be some sort of train station, like an Amtrak station or something. All of the buildings and old station have been removed. It looks like now this yard is just a meeting place between tracks. The only station from the bygone railroad days that's still standing is the Watsonville station. That's just before the Pajaro Junction. This is what it looked like in 1916. And this is what it looks like today shot from the same angle. So, at this juncture, you can basically hook a left and head to San Francisco, or hook a right to head towards Los Angeles.